How's it going, guys? This is Eddie Gray. Welcome to Artist Spotlight. Today, we're going to be looking at a phenomenal singer from the UK named Georgie Wells. My aim here is to inspire producers, beat makers, composers, and singers alike so that they can take their career to the next level. This is a phenomenal talent. So go ahead and take notes, and I'll see you on the next one. You know, one of the things I wanted to tell you, you're the second singer and i've been doing this for nine years come november you're the second singer that i've worked with where i didn't have to tune your vocals i didn't, <laughs> I didn't have to really like deep breath ds i don't know i mean i sure I, I i understand that you've been doing this for a while but it's such an uncanny thing to see and experience i just got to in, like sit back and enjoy like what you offered and i want to show people really quick what i'm talking about I'm not going to necessarily play the whole thing or anything, but so she turned in, you know, this and look, I'm not kidding. There's no like Melodyne or anything. She just turned in this amazing piece and I did a little chopping and stuff just to kind of gain stage. But like as a whole, no tuning uh, on the backups, I think maybe, yeah, there's an instance of auto tune. Uh, but the, again, those are the backups. So yeah. incredible and, and look at the detail here you got all the ooze and i love that you you know you're telling your producers like hey here's the fifth here's the third here's an octave up or down here's the double like that is so next level and, and it's it's unfortunate that we don't see this in every session um to expedite the process but to also show people hey i'm a professional you know i'm a consummate professional hire me the next time that we work together it really is a big deal uh, where'd you where'd you get into these habits like how did you become <laughs> this way because not everybody does it. Well, I would say it actually helps me when I... So I do a lot of... I have like a studio outside of this booth. But I actually do a lot of writing in the booth. And I like hit, being able to hear back what, what I've done. And I like to play with different harmonies and different kind of... Yeah, using different intervals um, and like be able to hear the difference and so what I sent you was the ones I liked but I had also done so there was like third and fifth third and sixth but I'd done others that were like just like a fourth or like fourth and fifth or something that was like a mixture of some of them and so that it ends up punctuating different like creating different chords um so it's actually really is more useful for me to work out what 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 harmony I'm I'll end up using um, in the end. But um, I mean, so but also I f I find it because I do a lot of my own vocal processing. So I will. Um, it depends what genre it is because like if it's anything that's like shiny pop then it, it needs auto tune on it just to like sit in with all the electronic instruments but um if it's like more soulful stuff then that's more uh i'll go in and fine tune it with melodyne um in a few places um so just for my own like being able to see what um, what I'm doing, it's quite useful to have it quite clearly labelled. Saying that, I also do tend to clear them up a little bit before sending them off to people. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I don't want to be don't don't want to uh, annoy per <laughs> producers that uh, it uh, is annoying. It yeah, is it's annoying. really annoying, and I've had it the other way round where. Um, I've opened projects from other people and it's been really disorganized and it's taken me like a full 45, like half an hour, 45 minutes to try and work out what everything is and where it goes or recording things, recording vocal parts onto one track, but they're all doing one's a lead, one's a back, backing vocal, one's a harmony and it's, but it's all on the same track is, uh, was really annoying. So I was like, oh, just get into a bit of a habit of it yeah it's uh it sh shouldn't happen especially if you're kind of past that rookie stage but i want to yeah. talk about a couple things um let's just cover real quick technology uh mm -hmm. any recommendations or workflows that really have helped you um or are helping you 
Are there any plugins that you really kind of lean on? Uh, any tech? As a, as a vocalist, sure, Melodyne and Auto Tune okay. are like the, together. Both, yes. Yeah, so I'll do Melodyne for the for the fine tuning, and then Auto Tune for not necessarily. It, I won't use Auto Tune on certain genres, um, but I do a fair bit of top lining for like pop EDM kind of stuff, and I just feel like uh yeah melodining any will just take the edge off of um any bits like maybe re reduce the amount of vibrato things like that timing it i the thing is i've i've been meaning to get vocal line for ages for the amount of group mm. vocal uh vocals uh that i do because it that basically lines everything up perfectly so you so that just sounds like it would save me loads of time. I just haven't got around to getting it. Um, and by the time I remember, oh, I should use this, I'm already halfway through timing all of the tracks. And I'm like, ah, oh, I, I can't do it now. Right. It's, uh, well, there is there is a, a alignment feature in Melodyne, but it's not as, uh, you know, like quick as that. AR yeah. 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 So I, yeah, I, um, I've used that. And the um some and it's also really melodyne's great because you can reduce any like sibilance that comes through uh like that really like and you can reduce it by a certain percentage so yeah. um and what it does is it reduces the volume rather than eqs it so instead of sounding like it's um i think because instead of it um sounding like you've got a lisp it just makes it less loud so um right. So yeah, whatever they did in that was wonderful. And then as for instruments, um, I'm really impressed with the free, the labs, are they, right. uh, who did the labs? Spitfire, right? Spitfire, that's one, Spitfire. I'm really impressed that they're free and often I'll use like the native instruments horns but then I'll put some Spitfire horn, like labs horns over it because they're really like beautifully imperfect. So you layer them both and it kind of makes it sound. Well, I mean, horns are so hard to make sound real if they're not real. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but that, yeah, that I, that I found really, really helps. And then, yeah, all the fab filter, uh, fab, Q, Fab, C, and Fab R. So the reverb, compression, and EQ are really, really great. And then also for trying to bash stuff out really quickly, Neutron and Ozone for the kind of master assist and mix assist. A really nice little shortcut yeah. for, for getting stuff done quickly. I thought uh, your, I thought your masters were all good. I mean, the stuff that you showed me, and also like I couldn't believe the the breath. I mean, you were like rock and EDM and like fifties, and I mean, you went through every decade. I think uh, on that playlist, I heard. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's quite useful having those to just kind of lean on. Um, yeah. And what else? Oh, I love. I love the retro color RC20. Um, oh, it's just so beautiful. And I've got, um, I also got the uh, fat sausage fatner, right. uh, which is Not also okay. really good. So I really like, I'm, I love a good saturation. Um, and I, I put it on, I put sausage fatner on like everything. Right. It, all genres pretty much it just makes it it's such just a one-stop shop you just put a bit on it yeah. <laughs> it's it's lovely but the retro color um that's wonderful for like motown and yeah. um, and anything like old it's just it's just lovely really nice and they even their presets are really interesting and you can there's a lot to change within it um so there's a lot to play with um it within it so you've i've got sausage fatner for just like a one-stop nice saturation and then um 
and then yeah retro color to be a bit more like fine uh more specific um but no those are i mean i use other i use like the arturia oh cool the eight which is really which is really great but i just um i i need to take advantage of it i just haven't had it's i've got it quite recently in the black friday sale and then christmas was a bit mad for with work and so i've only really got um was like only playing with it for like like a couple days doing some like 80s style stuff it's good fun it's a incredible bundle i've I've studied it extensively i love their effects too i want to talk about uh this as a job so you do this as as a full-time gig i do okay because the thing is you know i meet a lot of people and I, i ask you know a lot of people questions and and you know people are enthusiastic they want to they want to learn they want to win but they don't know how to and you know i always look at stories that you know inspire us and and help us to to keep going and so that's this is another reason why i wanted to hook up with you so how did you get into this you know whole thing and what keeps you going and how do you make it work i know it's not an easy thing to answer necessarily yeah. but if you could do your best just to give somebody you know a tip or or to yeah. and move along um I think just make lo- I mean, the main thing is just make loads of music mm. um, has been the thing. And just, yeah, just keep. That's been the thing that I found. So wait, the first question was, uh, what's my, how did I? Yeah, how'd you how, get into it? How do I get into it? Um, so I, I've only been in the industry for the last like year and a half, really um and i didn't know that it really exi- oh i knew it existed but i just didn't think that my skill set was um i didn't think i had the right skill set for it um which uh yeah i was literally talking to someone about this today and i think it's a very like female trait to be like oh i can only do 50 percent of that stuff that's needed there i that i can't do that but like it's there's been like studies of that that that's not that's a very like female trait to feel like you need to be able to do 95 percent of something to go for it versus there's been studies of when men go for stuff they they will go for stuff if they have got 50 percent or more wow um so yeah i uh yes i i didn't think i had the right um skill set for it so i i was a gigging musician pandemic hit i lost all my like regular um like gigs uh my um residencies i ran open mic nights and jazz jams and i did like corporate stuff and all sorts just like gigging every night i was exhausted <laughs> um and uh yeah then was looking into uh what music for sync is and um and yeah it's i i joined one of these like websites where kind of like pay to submit but you get to see what all the briefs are i wasn't i like i got some like uh stuff through to like the next stage but to be honest i think it's just quite a good way for a third party to make money so i won't say the name of the website (laughs) but uh but that then i saw these briefs coming through because it was during covid for heartfelt adult contemporary um acoustic stuff and i was like oh i can record that i've got i've got the I've got the stuff to do that. I've got the like um, technology and I'd done like music tech A level was my, so in the UK, you only study three things between three subjects between the age of 16 and 18. I did music, music technology and maths. And I went to a college with 2000 people per year and there were like 60 people doing music tech. Music tech was like my thing, the thing that like i got full marks i loved it i was the like music tech girl but i think you're told 
like at that age to go to if you get good results go to like a good university and do classical music so rather than music tech which was obviously the thing I was better at um so yeah I hadn't really done much I did a year studying commercial music production in, in my degree uh, I did a year out doing that which was amazing and honestly without I think without that it, I would have really struggled but um in this but yeah, I basically then used those skills to create lots of like adult contemporary heartfelt emotional very like a uh, Grey's Anatomy-esque stuff um and then and yeah none of it got picked up but then I then had this big catalogue of recorded music which I didn't have before I was just a yes I was a vocalist yes I was a musician but and there wasn't any proof of of what I could do so then with that I then approached people I was very thirsty on LinkedIn um and they and I that was people were really nice and it was a pandemic so people had time so they just yeah explained the in different parts of the industry to me and to be honest I'm still learning but um I then got yeah got some some like regular work got some top lining work which um which was really good so got a couple of placements um yeah just met some people through LinkedIn and just sent but because I had the stuff recorded I had like a variety of of vocal work that I could that I could say this is what I I can do um and then yeah the more work I did the more stuff I could show, the more variety. And now I'm doing like, I, I haven't done adult contemporary stuff in ages. Like I, I, I barely do it, but I love doing it. But like, I don't, I, I tend to do a lot of sassy female uh, pop for uh, like ads and for reality TV kind of vibes of like, I'm, I'm, that gal. <laughs> uh, so I'm, the, I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm yeah. the one. Yeah. I'm the one. Watch out for me. I'm really rich and successful. Uh, so yeah, I've been doing. I, I do a lot of that now. But um, but yeah. So I, that's kind of the the journey. Cool. Um, and yeah, from that, I'd say the main thing is be be humble but don't put yourself down and approach as like approach people reach out and ask like also yeah ask hi i'm new here i'd love to if you have a spare moment i'd love to pick your brain on sync and more people than you'd imagine get back to you because a lot of these people who work in in sync kind of live or work from home by themselves it's quite nice to have a chat just for like 45 minutes with someone who's thinks that you're what you do is really cool so um so yeah I I found that was really useful and I actually got some work through doing just asking like mm. what kind of stuff um like like how did you get into it how does the industry work like how what what do live what how does it work submitting to libraries what libraries do you like submit to like that do you collaborate with vocalists are there vocal is there a lot of vocal work or is it more instrumental just asking questions and um and i'm still doing it like i'm still constantly hustling setting up calls um i probably have like a call a week wow. to like just be like I, I try i try and reach out to i try and organize a call a week but you know these things like fall through and i don't it's now water off a duck's back i'm uh don't don't mind also there's a lot of like rejection and that doesn't mean that the music's bad it's like it's actually quite nice you can not blame it on the music you can be like oh they probably chose to go with like a different ad campaign or they went with they wanted a male vocalist or something and there's a lot that's completely out of your hands that's really kind of freeing a little bit because you're like oh well 
on to the next and everything that you make you can then use for something else so yeah. it never feels like it's a waste um so yeah that's my like make lots of music and like reach out to people yeah well i you know i just want to say that uh the fact that you're so good and i'm not you know obviously trying to bolster your ego but i think you need to own it it's like a like a gem or like a tool in your arsenal like hey you know what yeah. i put in the work i put in the time yeah. i went to school for this this isn't something that happened in one day i don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with saying that you're really good now of course yeah. if you're humble in that process it it's very graceful as opposed yeah. to being like you know i don't know unapologetic or or, or you know overly confident but yeah. what i want to tell you is the fact that you were so good like it instantly just makes you want to work with them because you realize like it's going to make you have made my life like so much easier where i have to do like let's say 10 different things now i'm just doing one or two and i i know this goes for the rest of the folks that you work with um i want to really segue really quick so you do this full time and so i don't know if that means two days on one day off five days on one day off so, but whatever the case may be how do you maintain your vocal health and your 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 sanity and your peace of mind? Because the one thing about a composer or a musician is it's not that physical to play piano. I mean, sure, of course, you got to use your hands, your ligaments, and but yeah. you're a singer and a drummer, but particularly a singer, you have to use your whole body. You mm -hmm. know, so like, how do you take care of it? What are some things to do? I find it fascinating because I really consider you an athlete and i'm not even trying to like overstate it i really think that singers are like athletes and, and drummers as well so what what are some tips to stay healthy and stay on top of your game um to be honest a lot of the i used to lose my voice all the time when i was a live musician and since recording it's uh i'm i rarely lose my voice and if it I do lose my voice. It's because I went to a three day long music festival. It's not from, from singing. Um, I, it does get tired and I, and the, the, the thing is when my voice gets tired, I lose the top range, but the bottom range gets really rich. So <laughs> I just, I just organize my work in a way where I'm like, mm, can't really do that again. Also the beauty of auto tune means that you're not having to or the beauty of melodyne is that i think my tone is good enough but if i'm trying to get if the brief calls for something and your center track and it's top lining and the key is like a third above my comfortable range i'll still be like yeah i could do that because i'll just like really reach for it and actually my my range has has grown because i went from singing live where it was like you have one shot to do it and if if you mess it up then everyone's going to know rather than in a booth where you're just trying to hit that like e high e like belt that e and you're like oh that that did not sound good let's go again whereas i just wouldn't go for it when i was singing live so my range you're kind of in a oh i find i'm in a space in this booth <laughs> um that I can really kind of go for it. And if my voice gets tired, which it will after a long day of doing, especially those like sassy Lizzo-esque briefs. Um, uh, yeah, I will probably just like, I rarely have too many of them in, in, in one go. And there's a, there's a, I joke that the briefs that the vocal briefs that come through are Lizzo, Dua Lipa and Billie Eilish and Dua Lipa is like husky and sleepy <laughs> and uh, Billie Eilish is also kind of husky and sleepy but those two they're kind of quite gentle, Dua Lipa is quite low like her range is relatively like it's quite chesty in tone and and the kind of like raspiness is a is a good thing um and then like the Lizzo stuff is very like like kind of shouty kind of like um yeah you really like give it your all and I, d I rarely have like 
I don't think I've ever had a I've definitely like tired my voice out but I've never had something that's tired my voice out and then had to do it like four days in a row um unlike when you're a wedding singer and you're going from doing like Michael Jackson to Whitney Houston to Beyonce and you're like okay I'm gonna do the love on top like modulations and I cannot hit those notes but I will shout and try and make them work doing that like night after night or that's the thing that really like messed my voice up but the but the stuff recording is um yeah I've I've actually got a bit of a life now because I can I don't need to be quite so careful about um um how how tired my voice is well i would imagine also if you sing live because of all the other musicians you're probably in terms of amplitude probably singing a little too hard yeah absolutely but when you're in a soundproof booth and and it's all about like the fashion that or the kind of style now is to close mic and be really like moody mm. that's like takes up less my voice is probably getting more tired chatting to you than it is if I'm like, <laughs> like really like <laughs> close. Don't do, that. Stuff. Don't do that. You're gonna take me away. <laughs> Actually, let's move. Last two questions. I want to move yeah. to your gear because yeah. when you told me, because I thought you were on some like crazy like you know Neumann or something, and you have really oh, good, consistent gear. But I want you to tell people because. It's just, it's so liberating because everyone thinks that if I buy this, I mean, am I wrong? If I buy this, I'm going to, oh, yeah. yeah. So what kind of gear do you have and how do you deliver everything to all your, your people? Um, so I have two mics. I have one that I have in front of like my production setup and that's the um, Shaw SM7B. So that's the one that like loads of podcasters use. Um, it's uh it's a really yeah it's it, you can't hear any background noise and i often use that for like backing vocals or like building a track and then i'll come in here and use this if it's if it's required but if it's i mean vocals are so processed now that like you can and there's plenty of like pop pop songs rock songs that have used that mic um uh so it's like it's fine to use that but um my my, my favorite is my um is my oh I've just said my k road k2 so that this baby and i just plug it into my focus right so it's just a an interface and into my laptop and then um and yeah i don't have any um preamps or yeah no um i know and and i mean i will at some point get a nice preamp but i i don't i've never had any complaints i've been able to provide kind of top quality vocals with this and i know people that have less like have less expense it's not that it's particularly expensive but i know people with less expensive stuff that that um produce just like yeah if you it's almost like if you've got a good voice you've got a good voice if you've I got agree. this kind of like if you know how to record it as well if you're if it's not clipping and if it's not if you've got a pop shield if you're not if if it's a good all right i don't know it's there's there's not too much to it it's not too complicated but also it's really useful recording in being able to listen back to it and be like oh that's it's like really popping at this point i'll soften this vowel or i'll soften this consonant uh cons con consonant yeah consonant there we go <laughs> i'll soften this um so yeah i i don't think it's 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 literally just learning by doing um but you can have really expensive equipment but 
have but record badly onto it but um, i knew a guy yeah. once that had the most decked out studio i thought he was gonna be amazing so i sat with them it was horrid i mean oh yeah so that's why when i when i meet folks that you know um i had this one guy come into my last studio and yeah. he was trying to tell me what a compressor did and everything he was saying was wrong he's like yeah when you lift i don't know if you're what your compressor knowledge is well you went to music tech so you should yeah. you probably do know but he said if you lift up the attack knob he's like it, it sounds harder like it makes the and i was like i didn't correct him because i actually don't believe in correcting people unless they ask me mm. so you know i, I just did what did he mean by harder so well, if the attack is longer well well that's the thing though so he thought i was adding you know like a tra he thought like a transient i was adding transient by yeah and i was like you know in my of course we we all know if we've studied it <laughs> that if you bring it down it actually manipulates the envelope so it closes on it which it'll probably make it punchier depending on what kind of compressor and settings you use but anyway my point is is you can be so good and not know what you're doing or have the best equipment i just want to liberate people because when i started yeah. like nine years ago i had a scarlet a laptop with four gigabytes of ram and i was landing you know trailers i was landing commercials and so it's yeah. really not about the gear and hopefully the gear will complement what you're already doing over time but you're doing so good um yeah like let's just keep it simple you know if it's working obviously it is let's keep it going um up until really recently i wasn't using i was just using all of the logic plugins i rarely i had native instruments but it always made my laptop crash so i'd just use the i'd use i'd write using all of the logic instruments and then uh and then later on import like like move the midi file onto uh, a native instruments one but very often i'd forget and i'd just carry on uh using and i landed some not necessarily placements because i'm still quite early days but i got clients through tracks that i did everything through logic um and so and yeah so and it's a, honestly like that's how I learn. And it was all the plugins that are on there. I found really useful for learning what compression does, what this does, all the presets on there, like, uh, like what EQ does, how EQing a snare drum can really change the whole instrument. Like those, I learned that through using all the logic plugins. So that's why I'm, I'm still quite, I'm very hesitant before I buy any plugins um, because I'm like, but do I need it? And it is lovely having others, um, but uh, it's just fun and it's lovely. It's not necessary in my I opinion. Agree. I agree. Let, let, let's talk about the future. Let's talk about the next year, the next five. Do you plan out? Are you somebody that likes to like think about the future in this way? Do you like to like, uh, you know, have a certain set of goals or aspirations um what would be ideal what would be what would be fun and exciting five years ten years two years um i i, I don't want to be a killjoy i don't plan <laughs> i don't plan for more than like the next couple i haven't even booked festival tickets for the summer because i'm like i don't know i might be on holiday or like i don't plan i to be honest, I won't, I, I, and I don't know who I'm going to meet. I don't know what opportunities I'm going to get. I mean, I'd love to write for, I'd love to try writing for artists as well, but I've, I've done a bit of like going to like, what well, I hate the word networking where you're, you're in a club, no one can hear you talk. I'm stone cold sober. And I'm like, so what do you do and they're like huh they're like and, and like getting people's numbers and then texting them and then but they're being like sorry who's this <laughs> um so like i don't i i do really like the i'd like to tr i'd like to i'd like to be in in the room for some for writing for other people but that's like one of those things that i think it'll naturally happen at some point but i'm not it's not the 
the the end goal it's something i just love to see what it's like um so i've got things like that that i'd like to try or that i'd like to do but i don't really have anywhere like a plan to i don't really have like um a plan for the next few years because every year i laugh at the plan i made the year before <laughs> so uh so yeah i think i there's things I'd like to do. I'd love to, I'm yet to develop my own relationships with well-paying libraries so that they're like, yes, we would like you to do an album of this kind of stuff and we'll, and you, and we'll like pay you for it yep. <laughs> and then we'll place it. So I've, um, I've done plenty of stuff for libraries. I've done individual tracks for libraries. But I that I think would be nice for some security, just like as a business to like um, be like, OK, so that will that I'm sorted out for this this chunk. Right. Um, uh, but at the same time, maybe I'll hate it because I really enjoy doing a real variety. And if I have to do an album of all the same stuff, I might be like a bit resentful of the fact that I I'm all my time being taken up doing one thing when I literally I love I love the variety I don't want to be a I don't really have any hunger to be a music artist because you have to brand yourself as one thing and I I love doing just you know like the, the everything <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I'm definitely gonna put links to all your stuff. Um, I don't want to play anything here just because we might get tagged. But uh, oh, yeah. take to to close out here. Take us through the usual week of someone who um, decides to to take on the path of music, being you know uh, mm. creative. So what does like any given week look like? Just to give somebody like you know a sense of this is what it's gonna feel. Uh, because yeah. I, I don't think a lot of people know there's no book there's no degree that you can get particularly of you know you're, you're like this entrepreneur how do you do it how do you make it like just take us through a, a week so i'd say two full days are what i call admin days um which is reaching out to people on linkedin sorting out my invoices I'm not a naturally organized person. So anytime I start a piece of work, someone says, hey, do you want to do a track? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but I don't consider how long, like what the how what other stuff I need to do. So I have a to-do list separated into music and admin. And my admin is always way bigger than the actual mu than the music. Is that so Monday think, and Tuesday or it just depends uh, on the week? It depends because uh, you, you know what it's like. I do a lot of ad, ad work where it's, quick turnaround they're like we need this done in now so whatever i'm doing i'll drop it so it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago and uh i got a brief through at 8 p.m the day before p.m nice and so was working on it from 9 p.m till 5 30 a.m yeah. <laughs> set it off and then they wanted amendments and i had to do so i left my birthday kind of drink like dinner didn't go for drinks and was back here and working on it from like eight till what 8, 8 p.m till 1 a.m so like i would but i really enjoy it so i don't feel, feel too bad doing that but um and i know that that's the way the nature of this industry so i say like let's say Monday, Tuesday, but if on Tuesday I get a brief through, then I've postponed that admin probably until the next week because I'll be like, I tried uh, and I have no motivation to do it. But that's the stuff that gets the work. That's the stuff that like, that's the, getting, uploading everything to disco, getting them. I'm in the process of doing all the instrumentals for them, which is like fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like don't, I it's not something I would like to be doing with my time but by having them then because otherwise I can't uh, I realistically won't earn any money from any of the stuff if I don't have them in different formats so it would have been it would be a waste if I didn't so I may as well so yeah just tidying up my catalog creating like getting back to people's emails creating 
playlists of stuff specifically for kind of people I've emailed that I'm like, oh, maybe they'll be interested in this stuff. Or um, for example, if it's a trailer company, then I'll put together all the, the trailer stuff. But if they have specifically said that they don't like cheesy trailer stuff, then I'll get rid of any of the cheesy stuff. Uh, and um, and uh, so, yeah, just stuff like that, getting back to people, um and then i'd say i yeah maybe like wednesday thursday friday i'd do like music making but for example today i had a call in the morning then i got asked to do a second verse to something that i'd done a first verse to and the client liked it so they wanted a second verse so came in here did a quick second verse um was looking after my friend's dog so had a lovely whip it accompany me while I like quickly melodined it tuned it um sent that back and that took maybe like two hours so I did that and then um got a work call then an unplanned work call so I was meant to be doing admin but um ended up getting a work call we spoke on the phone for like an hour 15 minutes which I mean I'm I could talk the back legs off a donkey so I I think it was probably my fault but he's also a very chatty person uh, so did that had some food came back back in chatting to you so um it's been a real mix today but it was meant to be an admin day and it ended up being like I think I did maybe an hour and a half of admin if that I know. So, um, cool. because th like the day ends up being something else but um but yeah I also find that because I don't tend to get asked to do stuff on a Monday it's always like Tuesday midday onwards they're like right we've spoken to the client on Monday they've then put a brief together spoken to some sort of like agent Ad team, there's loads of middlemen and who, and I don't really in this, and they it all works differently. So they all need to be on the same page before they then contact the musician or the composer to be like, can you do this quickly? <laughs> and uh, usually by that point, it's like Tuesday early afternoon. Um, so so yeah, a bit like a bit like today with getting or the client would like a second verse on a tuesday early afternoon so well we won't we won't take too much more of your time but here but no no, love no, it. no, no. Uh, it's just you know th this is what it takes like i'm so inspired by people like you because you found your way to do it and you give me life by like witnessing what you're up to and i know it's going to do this for a lot of other people and i know it does and people may not tell you this in this fashion but it's so inspirational and I, I love your talent. I, uh, I'm telling you, it is like therapy. So thank you so much thank for you. what you do. Yeah, we're, I'm stoked. And I know this is really just the beginning of something uh, much bigger. Let's throw out your socials and then we'll give like some closing comments. So uh, if people wanted to reach out for gigs, just for a chat. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I work from home by myself and I am like the world's biggest extrovert. So I'm always up for a chat um also if there's any other women who want to get into sync there's not a huge amount um so that's something that i i'm very happy to talk talk through um my socials are instagram is georgie wells music um and my youtube i guess i guess the good thing with this industry is i don't really need to be promoting i feel like i haven't done this in a while with the promoting stuff on socials uh soundcloud georgie wells music i think and uh um spotify georgie wells give my solo project a listen and uh uh i self-released some stuff um which is good fun and it's, that's that stuff's good good fun so very give. very good she's very humble i'm telling you it's off the chain 
let's let's uh let's do a little uh, experiment before we go here so mm -hmm. you started i think you said a year and a half ago mm -hmm. this musical journey um uh, what could you tell yourself now looking back at all the things you've been through the people that you've talked to the successes that you've had thus far um what can you tell yourself uh kind of back then when you started what's some relevant pieces of information um from a business point of view um every business is slightly different so don't take one way that like a one client um as like the way the whole industry works because um you've got these big companies you've got these small supervision companies you've got um you've got music supervisors for whole networks you've got companies that do it so there's uh i i throw around the word music supervisor all the time and i that's probably not the official name of a lot of the people that i'm uh, who are like my clients but i just called the people that i speak to who ask me for music um and also i found um just because like a company is small it doesn't mean that it's often that means that they'll have your back a bit more or you'll not necessarily your back but they'll it's just it, 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 there's pros and cons to working for big company doing work for big companies and doing work for smaller supervision companies i have enjoyed working for smaller ones um and i thought that it was a stepping stone to the bigger ones but having done work for bigger ones i i see them as equally as important and equally as successful um so for me anyway so i think that was something i didn't realize at the beginning i thought i had to get a, in with the big dogs but uh that's not not necessarily true yeah, um yeah. and also i would say just like your ability level is like you've got enough good things that there's a place for you in the industry is probably what i'd say mm. you are a gem in this industry uh thank you for taking the time and no, not at all. thanks for chatting just for, on a, from a personal never forget how special you are you're such an amazing human being and i feel so privileged to know you um thank you. Let's stay happy let's stay focused on what we want and i'll just let you say a closing statement and we'll cut it what 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 is a closing statement uh thank you We're like thank you so much for chatting and um yeah let's carry on working together and let's 2022 be a good year How's that? <laughs> i'm so sorry i don't, don't do but thanks right. for chatting it was lovely to see you of course
You're a fire when I'm cold. You're a helping hand when I've got a heavy load. Baby, 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 I'm so glad that you are mine. I'm so glad that you are.